Welcome back. My name is Abdi Sofia and I'm your host for the Global Columbus Show tonight. This is the second segment featuring the Turkish American Society of Ohio. Let me introduce you to my guests. Sarkan Aikan is the, uh, the president of the board of the Turkish American Society of Ohio. He is also the executive director of the Niagara Foundation. Mr. Aikan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Also, Orni Kurt is a board member with the Turkish American Society of Ohio. Mr. Kurt, welcome to the show. It's actually Kirk, Kirk. K-I-R-K, so owner I'm Kirk. Kirk, and I'm happy to be here. Indeed. Um, gentlemen, tell me about yourself, your background, uh, your work. Uh, I work for Niagara Foundation mm -hmm. as an executive director of Niagara Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a non-for-profit organization, and this is my third year in Ohio. I served for the, for, a, for the foundation about six years in Chicago, uh, so I'm so happy to be in Ohio. Thank you. Indeed. Mr. Kirk? I've been here a little bit longer than Sirkan. Uh, my parents uh, brought me here uh, in 61, uh, so it's been quite a few years. And uh, I've been uh, basically around Ohio uh, most of my life, uh, in particular Columbus. And I am a uh, civil engineer, uh, graduated from Ohio State. And I am a uh, uh, member uh, of uh, TASO, and previously to that, I was uh, the head of the uh, TACO organization, which is another uh, leg of uh, Turkish uh, society in central Ohio, TACO being Turkish American Association of uh, Central Ohio. And uh, uh, education. Uh, has always been uh, important to me, not just for my immediate family, for my kids. I have grandkids now, but uh, I do uh, uh, appreciate the the dialogue and the uh, the communication that we uh, uh, try to portray uh, our culture to uh, the uh, other residents of uh, Central Ohio through this association, and uh, um, uh, we can get into a little mm -hmm. bit more detail, but uh, we're trying to promote our culture and uh, let other people know this is a melting pot, this country. Indeed. Let other people know that we're just like them. We may be a different religion, but really there's not a, any difference in religion. We all believe in God, and uh, so... Th these are some of the reasons why I'm associated with TASO. Mr. Aiken, tell me about the Turkish uh, American Society. You work with the Niagara Foundation. What does the Niagara Foundation mean? How, how was it, uh, when was it founded? How long has it been here? Yeah, this is a good question because this is one of the questions that we are receiving uh, most of the time when we get together with our friends though. Uh, the thing is, Niagara Foundation has been established by Turkish Americans in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It was 1997, mm -hmm. and it was the uh, Niagara, Niagara Educational Services at that time, and they've been uh, kind of like uh, organizing some of the events for the tutoring for the after-school mm -hmm. students and the kids in Chicago area. And at the year of 2000, they wanted to open uh, an, a private school called Science Academy of Chicago in Chicago area. And when you're going to ask the, where the Niagara name is coming from, mm -hmm. uh, when they uh, wanted to establish the organization, they just wanted to get you know, inspired from Niagara Falls, and they were mm -hmm. thinking of if they can be as wide as, as big as Niagara Falls in the future. Mm -hmm. It was the inspiration of the, the name. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the year of 2003, uh, we uh, opened a kind of like a, as a DBA mm -hmm. uh, of uh, Niagara Educational Services, uh, and we called it Niagara Foundation. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the foundation term, we just would like to, actually this it was one of the uh, recommendation from our American uh, colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, because we were very active in the community. It's not just our, in our community, mm -hmm. as a Turkish community in Chicago area. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been uh, organizing some of the events together with them. 
and we were really active with some of the congregations, with the synagogues, with the churches, with the temples. And as an outcome of those connections, they told us, why don't you actually uh, also, you know, open a foundation? So instead of people just know you as Turkish community, mm -hmm. they might know you as an entity or institution. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, we decided actually we liked the name of Niagara because uh, in that name of Niagara, we are aiming to cover everybody. Because our doors are open uh, to anybody, and we definitely like it that way. And we just would like to have that common name uh, as labeled as Niagara. And after we opened the Niagara Foundation, uh, we at the 2005 we opened Turkish Cultural Center in Chicago. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest one. And we have a big community also in Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are assuming about 10,000 Turks live in Ohio. And uh, in settled Ohio area, we are assuming about, about 1,500 to 2,000 people, mm -hmm. and another 2,000 to Cleveland, another 2,000 to Cincinnati, and also in Dayton area, mm -hmm. and all over Ohio too. Uh, we have been getting together with our community members here, uh, because we are friends from the community, from the college, from the same town. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was another foundation here in Ohio called Sayar Educational Foundation mm -hmm. at that time. And we just wanted to get under one name afterwards because uh, if you're not for profit, you are struggle with uh, uh, the budget all the time. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. you are familiar with that, okay. so uh, we just would like to lower the expense a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of lowering the expense a little bit, uh, we, th we thought actually, why don't we uh, basically home. exactly join or mm -hmm. just get it under one name as an umbrella organization like Niagara Foundation. And uh, we changed the name and we merged with Niagara Foundation here afterwards. And uh, in terms of that uh, expand, expansion, I will say, uh, as uh, one of the executives in Niagara in Chicago, uh, I've been kind of also you know, uh, decided to come here mm -hmm. to Ohio as the executive director as Niagara Foundation to run Ohio. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is the uh, uh, basic lecture how the Niagara Foundation came up from. And afterwards, uh, we started actually doing a lot of programs and events. <coughs> Excuse me under the name of Niagara Foundation throughout the communities, throughout uh, uh, different institutions. Uh, in the same time, we would like to continue our own identity as Turkish Americans, though. And we opened another foundation called Turkish American Society of Ohio afterwards. And uh, they are, I will say, like a sister organization, as we spoke on the phone with you, but different entities, though. Uh, and I'm the board president of Turkish American Society of Ohio as my volunteer as a community work, but I work for Niagara Foundation as, as executive directors, though. So, uh, and we have been in Ohio about three years as Niagara so far, and we have been uh, branches in Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Dayton. <coughs> yep, mm -hmm. That's how the Niagara Foundation basically came up from, yeah. Um, the, uh, Mr. Kirk, Kirk yes. the, 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 the uh, Turkish American Society, I know your community is pretty uh, well founded. You were brought here in 1960. What services, what basic services do you provide to your community? Following up on what I had said earlier, uh, dialogue between communities. communities, different religions, is the main purpose of this program. Um, and when I say program, we've had uh, uh, yearly what we call Abrahamic, uh, you correct me if I uh, say the name wrong, but Abrahamic traditional uh, dinner once a year where we invite uh, people from the Columbus community from all walks of religion. And uh, we introduce, we, we explain a little bit about where we come from and uh, uh, try to promote the idea that we're really all one people. Uh, we, we don't need to classify ourselves as foreigners or different people just because we happen to be of a different religion. Um, there are groups within our association, uh, for lack of a better word, let's call it a, a weekly social gathering. Uh, we may gather in uh, uh, a friend's house. Uh, there may be a small group of us, let's say uh, 10 or 12 people. And we get together once a week. And uh, it's important to point out here that uh, not everybody in that group, our friends, are Christians. 
we have a minister that comes uh, all the way from Zanesville. Uh, every Wednesday night we meet. And uh, within that social two-hour uh, meeting we have, there's, it's also a little bit of a, a Sunday school uh, where uh, we read uh, uh, from, uh, from our holy book and the minister uh, explains the similarities between, for example, the Bible and the Koran in the message. So when you, uh, when you meet like this Wednesday after Wednesday, you really come to the realization that, you know, uh, whether you read the word of the Bible or you read the word of the Quran or the Torah, uh, it, they all have the same message. And there's no reason for us to consider ourselves different from the next person, regardless of their affiliation on Sundays or on days they pray. And, uh, um, so I can, in your website, it says you promote a global uh, fellowship. What does that mean? When we uh, start actually using that motto as global fellowship, um, we thought of one thing, though, which is we are human beings, and we are, sharing, we are sharing the same world, same atmosphere, same sky with everybody. Uh, and in this uh, same environment, we see everybody as, as a main kind, like the, the creation of the God, basically, and we are coming from the same mother and father. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that terms, we don't see any difference between the people. If you are going to count any person from your village, your fellow ones, actually from your village, or from my, my town, my fellow towners, and we just would like to call it like our uh, global fellows. And I believe it's going to uh, bring up more sincerity between us and in the conversations and also in the gatherings when we get together. And uh, once we know another person as a global fellow, mm -hmm. I believe we are going to break a lot of boundaries before we start speaking of any topics, though. So that motto is very important for us. Mm -hmm. And we would like to promote that mentality, if we can make it, though, uh, with our uh, humble and little uh, efforts, we would like to promote it anywhere that we can carry though. And we definitely had very good uh, feedbacks, very good, I will say, the outcome from that kind of uh, uh, communications, interaction with other groups, other congregations. And we love that motto and would like to uh, pursue actually continue using that motto for a while again. Yeah. I gotta tell you, it is a noble uh, motto. Uh, talk to me about your uh, signature events uh, on uh, what Mr. Kirk was talked about, uh, the Abrahamic uh, traditions. Yes. You also have other uh, uh, community uh, programs. Uh, I was very fascinated to uh, see you have a tour, you organize a tour yes. uh, for the uh, stakeholders and elected officials based in this community to yes. Turkey. Yes. Tell me more about that. Uh, the thing is, I mean, uh, we are residents of Ohio, mm -hmm. and we love uh, being in Ohio, living in Ohio. Uh, we are U.S. citizens, uh, but we have uh, a background, and our background is, is being Turkish, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, we definitely would like to, you know, if there would be a chance of contribution to the community that we are, here, we are being at, uh, we would like to do it as much as we can do. Uh, for that purpose, as just uh, Erner mentioned you, we do organize Abrahamic traditions dinner, and that is just for the Abrahamic religions. Mm -hmm. And we do organize interfaith uh, dialogue dinner, friendship dinner, mm -hmm. that is going to be our holy month of Ramadan. And we do, we do invite all of our friends from all of our different uh, the, the communities, diverse groups though. And we, all our target is to sit together at one table mm -hmm. and to, to meet, to talk about our differences and appreciate our differences. Because we believe in that our differences just enriching our life. It brings more taste to our life, if you are going to look at it from that perspective. Because when we look at actually to each other as one of our philosophy of the foundation, uh, we have about like 90 things in common in 100. We might just have 10 things different. And we uh, sometimes actually may prefer to speak about those 10 different things instead of talking about those 90 different, 90, 90 uh, the, the common things. And we prefer to promote those 90 common things to, to speak about. And that's why we would like to uh, organize a 
dinner called Abrahamic traditions dinner mm -hmm. because we have learned uh, to invite somebody to dinner from Prophet Ibrahim. So he was the person actually who started inviting the people because in our tradition also as well as the other uh, traditions it has a big value uh, and he used to invite the people from the market to his home all the time because he never wanted to uh, eat his, his his meal by himself. He would like to share it with, with somebody. So, so this is not a something that he just created. Abraham, uh, Prophet Abraham himself started this tradition. Exactly. I mean, it might be actually before Prophet Ibrahim, of course, but uh, according to actually our stories, our uh, sayings from our parents, from my, our ancestors, and from our holy book too. It's what it says. And I believe and I know it for sure there is a the very, very, I will say the same mm -hmm. sayings in Torah, same sayings in, sayings, sayings in, in the Bible too. Mm -hmm. So basically that's what we have learned that tradition from. And that's why we wanted to call it Abrahamic Traditions Dinner. And uh, we enjoyed it a lot. We have seen very good outcome from it. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as another actual result of the kind of uh, gatherings, mm -hmm. uh, because as I told you, we are from Turkey mm -hmm. uh, as our background, we just would like to you know, continue our relationship and connection to introduce ourselves, our culture, not just Turkish culture, but because of we are also uh, believing it might be different religion than the people believe in the US, which is called Islam. Mm -hmm. And we just would like to show them an Islamic state, Islamic place, mm -hmm. like Turkey. And that's why all Islamic culture, I will say. And that's why we would like to take them to Turkey as a trip to show our Turkish culture and some Muslim people who live in that religion, basically. And just to show them, just to introduce them, not much difference that we are sharing here at the US or Turkey. So uh, it is just one of the interaction. And it was also, I will say, uh, a recommendation from our American colleagues when we established the foundation. Mm -hmm. They told us, why don't you actually you know, uh, brought up a group to take to Turkey so we might know you a little more. And it might be great uh, interaction uh, starts in the communities. And we have seen very good outcomes from it. And yes, we have been taking some educators, some legislators to Turkey, but they're all project basis. So for instance, we are working with the uh, Ohio State University with Middle Eastern Studies Center, and there is a project called uh, Global Education. Mm -hmm. In terms of that global education work, they approached us, and also we offered them uh, under that title, one of we actually establish a group of educators from the US, and let's go to Turkey just to introduce one small part of global education, which is called I mean, Turkish education. And because we are from Turkey, we have a little more eligible to organize the programs in Turkey. But definitely, actually, with our, if we can have a chance to extend that uh, interaction with other states, let's say like Russia, let's say Central Asia, let's say in Balkans, we definitely would like to do that, do that too. But because of actually, as I told you, our eligibility is a little uh, more available in Turkey, we organize the trips to Turkey. And for the legislators, I mean, uh, there is a huge uh, demand to uh, lift the economy up in Ohio, of course. I mean, it's a big dilemma for all over the world these days. And since we are the residents of Ohio, we love to, if we can make any type of contribution, we love to make any contribution, though. And uh, since we have been facing, I mean, uh, since a couple of years, we have been starting lifting the economy of Ohio and U U.S., which is very, very good thing. Very, it makes us very happy, though. In the same way, uh, if we can also help that out a little bit. And the purpose was just to go and to meet with some of the business people in Turkey mm -hmm. to introduce the uh, good, <coughs> excuse me, uh, good uh, the products uh, of Ohio that we have, have, we, have, we, have, we, have, we are having here. So to promote them in Turkey, if there will be a good market to sell from Ohio to Turkey, in the same time if a collaboration can start. And after that kind of trips and state legislators were so nice actually being participating in that type of trip and they, they, did, did, they did a great job by um, uh, putting their all effort on it. And uh, there are a lot of actual business people came to Ohio from Turkey and regarding with some of the cattle businesses, some grain businesses. And also we have been uh, planning to have another business group from here to Turkey on August of September if we can make it. And the purpose is again to introduce the Ohio market to Turkey. And um, I would also, I don't uh, see any, uh, you know, the, the difficulty to also share this with you. Turkey is a good market for also Europe, 
for Middle East and for Central Asia too. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, actually the Turkish economy is doing doing nice, even though actually there were a lot, lot of, there were a lot of economical difficulties. Uh, listen, past. yeah, exactly past decade, mm -hmm. but in Turkey they are doing very good though, in, because we know the reason they have been good connection with the Middle East, with Central Asia, with Balkans, with Russia. And it might be a good collaboration, we thought of, to promote the Ohio market to those regions too. And I believe uh, the business is uh, not very easy thing, uh, mm -hmm. because you're talking about the numbers. Unless business people like the numbers, they wouldn't do anything. And they're definitely right about it. It might take some time. For that purpose, I mean, we are just trying to you know, uh, start an, and just initiation, start just uh, uh, some of the activities between those two states. And we are assuming in a couple of years, we are going to have a good outcome from that connection though. And that is the purpose that we have been organizing the trips. And just uh, if I'm not actually, you know, taking a lot of your time, I would like no, to- No, indeed, I'm, I am enjoying that. Matter of fact, what you're talking about is something that this state and the city of Columbus needed a lot, the mayor mentioned in his last uh, state of his speech that uh, he unveiled a new initiative called Club Columbus Global Connect, which is an initiative that really connects the city uh, businesses to uh, overseas opportunities uh, and vice versa, you know, exchanging business back and forth and, you know, trade uh, deals and, 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 and it is it is quite interesting. Mr. Kirk, you, and I know I'm, I'm Kim pronouncing your name again. You're, you're doing very well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you. You call me Captain Kirk if you like, Captain if that makes Kirk. it easier. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you have a special event uh, that celebrates women as state uh, builders. Is that what it says? Talk, talk to me about the women program that you have. Yeah, I would like to interrupt Mr. Uh, I, I think you should. <laughs> um, uh, he knows more about it. I have attended some uh, uh, shows that promoted, you know, women uh, in uh, the Columbus Society and so mm -hmm. forth. But uh, if I can just uh, follow up on mm -hmm. one thing that he said uh, about the trips to Turkey mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, you know, first of all, it's important to... Uh, reiterate that this is a nonprofit organization, uh -huh. Niagara uh -huh. Foundation, uh -huh. and there's really no ulterior motive other than to promote uh, our culture, mm -hmm. our religion, and to let the residents, in, in our case, the Columbus chapter, in our case, let the residents of Columbus and the surrounding communities know that we're just like them. We have, uh, we have a common thread, mm -hmm. and uh, the trips, uh, Sarkhan is, was nice enough to uh, have me invite, for example, uh, six of my neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, on May 13, we're going to take a 10-day trip to Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, Christianity started in what is known as Turkey today. Mm -hmm and we're going to an Eastern Roman Empire and uh, back to the apostles uh, when they were being persecuted mm -hmm. they were uh, they their churches were in caves in uh, in uh, central Turkey and so forth so the idea is uh, Sarkhan is not making any money on this deal uh, we're going to take eight of my neighbors actually and uh, we will spend uh, three days in Istanbul. We'll, we'll go down to four other cities to see some of these historical sites and let them get a taste of uh, the culture and the way the people bond and so forth. And uh, this is Sarkhan's way of circulating the word that we're, we're peaceful and we're similar in purpose to everybody else uh, in this community. And uh, I, I think, Sirkan, you would know this better, you probably do this on a monthly basis. You take a group. And I just happen to be lucky enough that next month we're going to be uh, <laughs> doing it with my neighbors. And I really appreciate what, you, uh, what we're trying to do here. And, and same here. As, as uh, one second, uh, my brother here, 
uh, what he said of the work you're doing. I did make a little um, surf in your website and um, on the, the Turkish American Society and Niagara Foundation, uh, building and focusing on collaboration and emphasizing a community building, uh, peace. And, and I found out that Turkey has a long tradition of promoting and and really in the interest of education development. Well, that, was, that was really very, very interesting. I cannot, uh, the time might not be enough to talk about this, but I, we will invite you back. Now, uh, the final word, the time is running out. Uh, what do you want to uh, tell people? What do you want to advise for those who want to be familiar with your organization? Last word. And first of all, I will be so ha I mean, uh, delightful being here. Thank you very much for inviting us um, to be your host. Uh, it's a great um, opportunity to mention about our organization. Uh, there are a lot of uh, similar organization they have been doing also in Ohio, in Central Ohio, like ourselves. And we are so happy to work with them. And we are very, very delightful also to be with them too. And I mean, it's a great people, great state. I mean, what can I say? I'll be so, indeed, I'm so happy to be, to be here. Mr. Though, Sarkan yeah. Icon, Lori, or Lori, Lori. Lori uh, Kirk, Captain Kirk, I may say. I uh, appreciate, thank you so very much for uh, coming and talking to us on Global Columbus Show. Um, and this is the end of our uh, second segment. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.